Good morning, you beautiful motherfuckers. What's up? My name is Ronan, and welcome back to the Little Seal English Podcast. So, I went home. I went back to Ireland. And it was amazing. It was absolutely surreal to be back home. So, I was back in Ireland in 2020, 2021 for six months. Of course, that was during lockdown, so not a lot was going on. Five kilometer lockdown, so couldn't really go anywhere. There was no bars open, didn't get to see a lot of people. But this time was very different. This time, everything was open. And oh my god, did I miss so much more than I can remember. So, I got home after an absolutely horrendous journey from Canada to Ireland. My estimated duration of travel was about 17 hours. In reality, it was over 70 hours before I got from Vancouver to my front door in Ireland. It was an absolute shit show. It was a circus. It was a nightmare. It was easily one of the worst travel experiences I've ever had in my life. It was so bad that I'm currently in the middle of producing or or writing a podcast about it because I could talk for days on everything that went on. To sum up, like a very quick summary of my flight from Canada to Ireland. I flew from Kelowna to Vancouver, stayed in Vancouver airport overnight, so I slept on the floor, not a good sleep. In the morning, I hopped on a plane from Vancouver to Chicago, Arrived into Chicago, and as I arrived in, I looked out the window, and I could see an airplane on the runway, surrounded by fire, police, and ambulance. So there was a load of flashing lights around this airplane. Now, the airplane was an Aer Lingus plane, which is the Irish airline, and Aer Lingus was the airline I was flying with from Chicago all the way back to Dublin. I had to sprint through the airport to get from Terminal 2 to Terminal 5. So I hopped on a train at Terminal 2. It brought me to Terminal 5. I honestly thought I was going to miss my connection. Connection. So that's what we say. Uh, I have a connection in Chicago and I'll fly to Dublin. I have two connections on my flight. I have three connections on my flight. When you go to one airport, you don't leave the airport. You just go to another flight and leave the airport within a matter of hours. So I was worried I was going to miss my connection. Thankfully, I didn't, because my flight was delayed by 20 minutes. Then the flight was delayed by an hour. Long story short, the flight was cancelled, and I was put up in a hotel for a night. To be put up in. I was put up in a hotel. I didn't pay for the hotel. The airline paid for the hotel because of the cancelled flight. So if someone, a company, a friend, a family member, puts you up in a hotel, that means they pay for your stay at the hotel. You don't pay. So I was put up in a hotel by the airline. Get to the hotel, the kitchen's closed, go to bed with no food, absolutely starving, terrible trip. Next day, I go from Chicago to Miami and then Miami to Dublin. That's the very, very, very simplified version of it. I'm going to give you a much more detailed and hilarious version when I finally finish creating the podcast. Because it is... uh, Yeah, just wait. You're going to love it. So, I get back to Ireland. What did I do? Spent a lot of time with my family. Spent a lot of time with my friends. Spent a lot of time with my dog. Went to a lot of different Irish bars, which I totally missed. Went to the beach, which of course is just the greatest thing in the world. The ocean right there on my doorstep in Ireland. Did a tiny bit of hiking, not a lot. It was more of a relaxing and gluttonous holiday. And then just admired the beauty and and, and really appreciated the disconnect from work, from social media from English teaching, from everything. You know, it really gave me a good opportunity to unwind. 
A lot of people these days go on holidays, but they don't actually disconnect. They're always connected to work. They're always connected to the next task that must be done. And I get it. It's kind of hard to separate yourself from that. Like I got back to Ireland and I still had about two days of work left. So once I got those two days done, I just turned on relax mode. And boy, did I relax and boy, did I overeat and boy, did I overindulge on everything Ireland has to offer. I noticed some culture differences when I was there. These are things that actually no. So a culture difference is when you notice a difference between one culture and another culture. Culture shock is when you're surprised by it. Now, when I came to Canada, there was a lot of culture shock. But have you ever heard of the term reverse culture shock? Reverse culture shock is when you go back to your home country, your home culture, and some things surprise you about it. That happened to me. Some things I noticed. People don't say thank you as much in Ireland. We give thanks, but we don't actually say thank you. For instance, I was leaving a bar and I saw a man was walking up to go into the bar. So I held the door. He walks past me, looks at me, and he says, Good man. Good man. And it it hit me. That's what I used to say instead of thanks. Of course, we do say thanks, we do say thank you, but there's more variations of it in Ireland. And good man or good woman would be a way just to say thank you to a person. If someone helps you, a good man, thanks. If you want to say thank you very much, you might say good man yourself, good woman yourself. And it's just another way of saying thank you. So that was a cool one that stood out to me. Another thing that I really noticed was the driving etiquette. I got my driver's license the day before moving to Canada. So most of my driving experience has been in Canada. I'm a Canadian driver, basically. And I got home and I noticed how slow everyone was driving. I noticed how more polite everyone was when driving. There's no problem letting a person into your lane. There's no problem um, slowing down to let someone pass you out. However, in Canada, that's not as common as you would think. In Canada, people drive a lot faster. In Canada, people are certainly more aggressive when they drive. They're less likely to let you merge at times, which is dangerous and rude, I believe, but it is what it is. So I found that really interesting. The driving etiquette and the driving culture was quite different in Ireland compared to Canada. And these are things that I only notice when I'm back, obviously. Another thing related to driving was tailgating. Tailgating. To tailgate is a verb. Tailgating is a noun. And tailgating is when people drive incredibly close behind you. So if you're on the highway and you look in your mirror and you see a car that is just way too close, they are tailgating you. A lot of tailgating happens in Ireland. And I I can't understand why, because the roads are very windy. The roads are... Like, have a lot of sharp turns, a lot of blind turns. A blind turn, you can't see around a corner, so you don't know what's there. And in Ireland, there was way more tailgating compared to Canada. I like to leave a lot of space between me and the car in front of me, obviously. I don't want to have to slam on my brakes if they slow down. And, you know, if you are tailgating a person and they suddenly hit the brakes, you might hit them. That is called a brake check. Brake check. If there's a car tailgating you and they're too close, you can slam on your brakes. And then that's obviously going to have a knock-on effect on them where they might hit you or they have to swerve to avoid you. Incredibly dangerous. Don't do it. But now you know what a brake check is and the verb to brake check. Oh, I'm going to break check that motherfucker behind me. Buckle up, for instance. So 
In terms of driving, some cultural differences. The Irish drive slower, in my opinion, from the Canadians. The roads are incredibly windy compared to Canada. In Canada, the roads are straight, uh, as far as the eye can see at times. It doesn't usually happen in Ireland too often. And the other one was tailgating, a lot more tailgating. And Irish drivers are more polite in terms of letting you join the lane or just letting you pass them out. Or if you're in traffic, sure, I'll let a car enter the line of traffic that I'm in. So some just some interesting differences I noticed there on the uh, the Irish driving front. Now, let's see. The trip overall, guys, was just amazing. I had a great opportunity opportunity to catch up with friends. Friends I hadn't seen in oh, five years maybe at times. And I think the best testament or the best test of a real friendship is when you don't see each other. Sometimes you don't talk to a person for an extended period of time. But the next time you meet them, it's as if you had just seen them yesterday. It's as if you were just hanging out with them on a regular basis. Nothing has changed. The humour is there. The jokes are there. The relationship, the chemistry, everything is there. And nothing has gone away. In Ireland, we have a term called the crack. C-R-A-I-C. And the crack is Irish humour. The crack is how we make jokes with each other. The crack is news. The crack is... The Irish way of having a laugh, having a fun time. And great crack was had on my trip in Ireland. And that just means a lot of fun was had with my friends who I hadn't seen in years. I was able to go home, hang out with them and just have a really good time. We would talk about what happened over the last couple of years, talk about COVID, talk about general life. And it was amazing just to have this opportunity to be in my hometown, walk down the street and bump into someone you haven't seen in over 10 years. I bumped into one of my old teachers. That was a lot of fun. Teachers. I said that a little weird, I think. I bumped into one of my old teachers. That was really cool. It was a trip. An absolute trip. This is the teacher that I had for math when I was in high school or secondary school, as we call it in Ireland. I was horrendous at it. But this teacher made math interesting. This teacher actually was very good at encouraging and motivating students to learn and to study and to take ownership of your learning. And I had a great relationship with this teacher. I was talking to him and I actually thanked him because he's one of the reasons I became a teacher. He had such a positive impact on my life. I was like, that must be a good feeling. I want to do this as well. He was obviously very happy and chuffed and proud to hear what I had to say. But I think that that is definitely another highlight of my trip, meeting my old teacher, the teacher that inspired me to get into teaching and to have the opportunity to thank them. It's not too often you get to thank someone from your past. So if you get a chance to thank someone from your past, don't hesitate. Just do it. So now I'm back in Canada. It's 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 cold. Technically, it's colder than Ireland. But I dare say Ireland feels colder than Canada. It doesn't make a lot of sense. I came back and it was minus two. I went outside with just a body warmer, pair of jeans, no winter jacket, no winter boots, just regular boots. And I wasn't cold. I was able to stand outside and enjoy it. In Ireland, if it's minus two, it's freezing. It is so cold. You can't compare it. The biggest difference is, though, is the dampness. The dampness in Ireland. Dampness. Everything is wet. (laughs) Everything is damp in Ireland because it rains every day. The humidity level is incredibly high. We're right by the ocean. It's windy. So I do believe that Ireland feels colder than Canada. Even when you look on 
the internet and you look at the actual temperature and the feel like temperature Canada would still be down as colder but because it's a dry cold it's not a problem in Ireland it's a damp cold it's a wet cold the wind goes through you the wind cuts you like a knife compared to Canada where if it is snowy it's not actually that cold now of course, if it gets past minus 10, minus 15, minus 30, no question, Canada's colder, Ireland is better. <laughs> but, again, you can dress for that weather. You are prepared for it in Canada. You have your down jacket because it is perfect for a dry cold. Down. It's like a feather. And you have down jackets, but you can't really wear down in Ireland because when it gets wet, it gets heavy. And Ireland is always wet, as I said. So, in Canada, when it gets to minus 30, yes, it is absolutely freezing. You'll freeze your balls off. You'll freeze your ovaries. It will just not be pleasant. Compared to Ireland, where at minus 2 or 3, it could be that cold. But damp. It gets into your bone, you know? It's like you can have all the layers you want, but you're still going to feel the cold because it'll just seep into you. It's a really weird one to explain. Just go there and experience it, if you want. So, as I said, I'm back in Canada. Back at work. I have a pretty sweet schedule this semester. But the start of this semester has been a shit show. So I mentioned how the flight was a shit show. Getting from Canada to Ireland was an absolute shit show. Everything that could go wrong did go wrong. Well, going back to work in the college I work at has been a shit show this week. And it has been a shit show because the internet is down. There was a cyber attack at my college. Cyber attack. You've probably heard of cyber attacks. You know, it's when someone attacks the website and maybe tries to steal personal information. So the college I work at was attacked recently. There was a cyber attack. Uh, power has not been restored yet. We currently have emails. We currently have access to our learning management system, which is called Moodle. An LMS, Learning Management System. And Moodle is the one we use. Canvas is another one that is popular in Canada. Um, I know Athens, I think, is another one. There's, there's many, many, many different types of LMSs. If you went to university or college, there was probably an LMS that you used where your teacher, professor, instructor could share notes with you, upload videos, you can upload assignments there. So our LMS is working. However, students are not registered for my course because the internet is down, which means I can access my online classroom, but my students can't. Not much good, right? What else? Because the internet's down, there's no printers in the college. Because the internet is down, some of the uh, projectors don't work. Because the internet is down, everyone's trying to use their data and trying to figure out how much data they can actually use in the class. Now, not having internet is quite a problem for various reasons. It's not just the teaching aspect, it's the management aspect. So as I said, some students have been unable to receive any messages whatsoever and they don't know what classroom they're in. They don't know what class they're taking this semester. They haven't received a confirmation because they haven't been registered because the registry office is unable to work. You can't even log in to the college website right now. The website, everything is down. So if you're a new student, you don't know where your class is. You don't know who your teacher is. You don't know anything. It has been a shit show. So I've been going around trying to find my students. I have found a couple of them. So we started the class, but we're still waiting for about five or six people to come to the classroom. Can I contact them? No, I can't. I don't even know their names. So it has been a shit show. This week was a shit show. The start of the semester has been a shit show. 
I know it's going to get better, but still, it is quite frustrating and a terrible start to a new semester. So, I have really good hours in the college this uh, semester. I'm quite happy with them. And uh, as a result of that, I am focusing more time on the podcast and I'm focusing more time on courses. I'm very excited for 2023. You know, I'm more positive now about the goal of self-employment than I was 12 months ago, definitely. I recently did a course teaching me how to sell courses because it's something that I am not too familiar with. I'm a teacher. I'm not a salesperson. I'm not a marketer. But this course has been wonderful. I'll I'll share the information about the course at a later date. And uh, I might even interview the person who created the course on this podcast because it has been a game changer for me. So overall, I'm hoping to do two different courses this year. Uh, The first one is a CellPip course. CellPip. CellPip is a language exam in Canada. CellPip is an exam that people do in order to live in Canada. If you want to become a resident, a permanent resident in Canada, you need to prove your level of English. You can do IELTS, you can do TOEFL, I think, and you can do CELPIP. CELPIP is the easiest of the exams. CELPIP is something I've been teaching for at least five years now, on and off. But recently, a lot of my private students and private contracts have come via the way of CELPIP and people wanting to just get quick lessons about the structure of CELPIP and all of that. So my first course that I'm going to launch is going to be a CELPIP speaking and writing course. It's going to be about eight weeks. And even if you're not doing CELPIP, even if you're not doing the exam, the course would be incredibly beneficial because I do like the speaking aspect of the CELPIP course, of the CELPIP exam. A lot of language learning or language testing exams have speaking components that aren't relevant or useful for real life. But CELPIP, in my opinion, is a little different. Task one is all about giving advice. Task two is talking about a personal experience. Task three is to describe a scene. And then task four is to predict what will happen next. Task five is dealing with a difficult situation. Task six is uh, comparing and persuading. That's a wonderful one. You have to compare two options and persuade a person your option, your choice is better because blah, 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 blah. Task seven is giving your personal opinion on a topic. And then task eight is describing something incredibly unusual. Like those are all real life skills. Those are all like super useful aspects of the English language. So I'm very excited to get that course underway. And because I've been teaching it for so long, I have so many materials made. So it's just a case of me getting my cell pip name out there and doing it. So that's the first course I'm going to be launching, hopefully in February. The next one is a real English course, and that's kind of based on the podcast. Um, I released a podcast episode before Christmas called Real English One. And I'm hoping to turn that into a course and have more versions of that, not just one episode, but to have more versions of it and then run a corresponding speaking class based on the topic. So stay tuned for that one. It's going to be more general, but definitely teach you real English. You know, the English that I hear every day, the English I hear just living in Canada. And I'm not talking about English from a native speaker because who cares about that? English is English. It doesn't matter if you're a native speaker or a non-native speaker. Especially if you live in a country like Canada. The majority of English speakers here, okay, I don't know about the majority, but a lot of English speakers here are non-native speakers. What's the point of learning from a native when you're not going to be talking to natives all the time? So, that's going to be a good one. Real English. Can't wait. And then, because I also have so much time, on my hands, well, not so much time, but I have more time, I have decided to, number one, go back to yoga, and number two, join a swim club. Two big things for me. Yoga, amazing. Hot yoga, love it. I am incredibly unflexible. I'm incredibly stiff. 
You know, I don't stretch enough. I don't do yoga enough. I haven't been exercising enough. And my body just feels lethargic and heavy. And last Monday, I went to my very first yoga session in a couple of years. I was sweating buckets. Oh my God, it was difficult. But it was amazing. I felt like a million dollars after. And of course, as soon as I finished, I was thinking to myself, why haven't I been doing this for longer? Like, why why did I take a break from it when it makes me feel so good? Now, instead of looking back on the past and regretting it or something, obviously I'm looking forward. And I'm just happy that I'm back and I'm happy that I'm doing it again. So, yoga, amazing. I bought a punch pass for yoga. Punch pass. You can buy membership. You can buy unlimited membership, which is quite expensive. Or you can pay as you go. Pay as you go is you pay for every session as you arrive. You get your card out, you tap it. Now, I'm not doing that. I have a punch pass. I prepaid for 20 yoga classes. And every time I go, I lose a class. So I have 19 more yoga classes ahead of me. Because I bought 20 in one go, there was like a 10 or 20% discount. So it made more sense. I used to go on a more regular basis. And if I were going on a more regular basis, I would buy a membership. I would buy an unlimited membership. And that just means you can drop in whenever you want. And they have like four or five classes a day. So you could go twice a day, every day, if you wanted. I've bought those before. And I haven't used them enough to justify it, to justify the price. That's where the punch pass comes in. I'm not under pressure to go. I can book it for next week and not be worried I'm losing money because I'm not using it enough. So going back to yoga, I feel absolutely amazing. I feel like a million dollars. It's great. Now, I also mentioned I'm going back to the swim club. Before I talk about the swim club, I'm going to take a sip of coffee. Excuse me for one moment. <clears throat> oh, that's good. I needed a coffee. My throat was getting a little dry. Not that coffee will help with a dry mouth or dry throat. So, the swim club. Wow. My name is Ronan. My business is called Little Seal English. My name translates to Little Seal. I'm obsessed with the water. I'm quite a good swimmer. I'm quite competent at swimming. I believe in my ability to swim any distance. I don't care. I'll do it. I may not be the fastest swimmer, but I just don't get tired. And for me, I have always been swimming. Always. My entire life I've been a swimmer. But I've never really swam with other people. I've never really engaged in competitive swimming in my entire life. I have swam against friends. I've swam against lifeguards when I worked with them, but I never entered competitions and I never had a chance to swim with other people. And so I need to swim with other people because I won't get any better otherwise. And it's very frustrating. I'm also wanting to swim with other people because it'll keep me more motivated it'll keep me more on track and as i said it will help me become a better swimmer i'm never going to get faster i'll be able to go further if i hit the pool and i do 100 laps that's going to help but if i hit the pool and i only do 50 laps but i do 50 laps of intensity and there's an actual program to follow that is more efficient than me swimming by myself without a real plan So I've decided this year to invest in myself and invest in myself in terms of joining yoga and joining the swim club. I'm incredibly nervous because I've never swam with other people before. I can virtually remember just one time in Ireland when I did open water swimming with a group and I loved it. I love the ability to see other people in the water to know you're on track. And this year I really want to do more swims. I'm really excited for it. Last year, I did too, but I never got prepared. Summer came around and I wasn't ready for anything, so I used the summer to get healthy. 
But now I'm starting in January and I'm already at a good baseline of fitness and healthiness. And I know with a little bit of work with the swim club, that line is going to go up, up and up. And I'm really, really excited for what the future holds in terms of swimming. So overall, folks, I went home. I had a great crack. It was amazing. It was so much fun. I got to catch up with people. I got to go to my old hangout spots. The testament of a good friendship is when you don't see people for years and when you do, it's just like it was in the past. Nothing has changed. You're able to continue the conversation, the humor, the jokes. The flight over there was an absolute shit show. Again, there's going to be a whole podcast about that because it was so bad and I have so much to say about it. I have so much to rant and rave. One thing I will say, just when I spoke about crack and how I miss the crack in Ireland, I miss the humour in Ireland. And one thing the Irish can do very well is to make the best of a bad situation. And I did that in Chicago airport. Because I hung out with a group of about 10 Irish people and we went to the bar and we had a good old piss up. We just had a couple of drinks and had laughs amongst each other. Complete strangers. None of us knew each other before going on that plane or before arriving in Chicago. And then we all hung out, became friends for a short while, might see them in the future, I'm not sure. But again, that will all be included in my podcast. I'm just wondering, do other cultures do that? Or are you a person to do that, to make friends in an airport when there's a cancellation? Are you able to make the best of a bad situation? Because we are. I mean, we had to. We kind of had a shit 800 years there in Ireland. What else did I say in this podcast? I'm um, back at work. New timetable is pretty good. Uh, It's been a shit show at work because the whole IT system is down due to a cyber attack, a cyber security issue. In the future, I am launching a Salpip course and a real English course designed to boost your confidence, your engagement with English, to put the learning in your own hands. I've signed up for a swim club and I've gone back to yoga and I feel like a million dollars. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for listening to this incredibly unplanned podcast. I just knew I missed podcasting, and I knew you were waiting for one too, so gotta gotta help the fans, you know? <laughs> uh, please take a look at the link in my bio. There's a survey. I'd love for you to fill out the survey. And otherwise, I hope you're happy, I hope you're healthy, and I will see you very, very soon. Bye for now. <laughs>